Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If there's any ladies amongst you, of course. Um, today I got involved in, in a little bit of banter with some pals that like model railways. And it occurred to me that some 57 years ago, I went to a model railway exhibition in Ilford Town Hall. Now, 57 years ago, I was not quite as tall as I am now, and there was a magic to it. And it was the Ilford Model Railway Club's annual exhibition, and they had trains of all sorts. They may have had things like that, and they may have had things like that. But to me, it was this magical, wonderful world that was being opened to me. You know, you've got to imagine that my little nose was that sort of high to most of the layouts, and I was looking at these wonderful, wonderful things, and these, these older chaps who were playing with controllers and things and making these trundle up and down. Now, some people say that we end up getting obsessed with model railways. Not so, not so. Um, we do have other things, like we have guitars and we have trumpets and, yeah, and organs and things that we, we play with sometimes. But you must understand that to a little chap aged three and a bit, this was a world of make-believe, of course, but a magical, magical thing. And we would be taken and shown things like this in model railway shops. I've got some other things. Let me... Bear with me. Bear with me. Oh, dear. Oh. Yes, we would see these things in shop windows and we would get all excited and we'd be shown that this one's got a door that opens on both sides. Just imagine the fun that you can have with that. I wonder if that one... No, those doors don't open. That's strange. Otherwise it looks identical, apart from the colour and a few other changes. But, you know, you could imagine being a passenger in this London, Midland and Scottish railway carriage behind a big thundering engine with steam billowing everywhere. Um, and shops had things like this. Uh, I've made a mistake somewhere in my packing. I do have what goes in this, but it's somewhere else. I think it's probably already in France. And you would read the labels. And this one now, um, lucky children that lived in Rye were able to go and look in this shop window and dream about having a thing like this. And very much that was what it was about. We dreamt about them, we wanted them, we, if you will, we lusted after them. Probably better than some of the other things we ended up lusting after. Got us in all manner of troubles. These, on the other hand, will only break your wallet. Um, so that's how we got into it. And then, you know, we grew up and we grew out of them. These are toys. These are for little kids to play with. They're not for grown men, are they? And we, we got jobs and we became serious and we became dependable and, and, and boring. Now, of course, we reach an age where we look back on our youth and we remember that every summer was beautifully sunny and every winter had crisp and even snow that you could play in and make snowballs and throw them at your dad or better yet, your sister. Nothing better than chucking a snowball at your sister. And we look back on those times with huge affection. Um, when I was four, I had no responsibility whatsoever. You know, I didn't have to go to school or to work. I didn't have to plant potatoes in the fields or anything like that. I could play. And when I was four, my dad 
got me a train set. He didn't get it for himself to play with, no, no. He got it for me to play with. And just for the record, it was a trying mixed goods set with a little 060, a thing that we would call a genty, and some wagons and a goods van. And of course, trains in those days had brake vans, goods vans, where the guard would stand and he would look along the length of the train and he would, when the train was ready, he <whistles> look, ha ha, how many of you have got one of those? Um, just for the record, this has been blown in anger. This whistle has seen away steam trains. I blew this whistle to dispatch a 264 tank, a four mixed traffic tank from Shubriness Station. Right away, driver. <whistles> Wonderful stuff. Um, funnily enough, that's going to France with me, where we're going to teach them all about British railways. So there we are. We dream and we want to build model railways. Now, over the next few months and years, I've got a huge project. Most of you know that we've bought a house in France. It's, it's a bit tumbly down. It needs an awful lot of building work doing to it. And attached to it is a barn. Uh, not a big, big barn as barns go, but compared to the average shed, it's huge. There's a little snag with it. Um, where the railway is going to go at the moment there's just empty space and I've got to lay a floor which starts with putting in some beams nothing too difficult with that except they are 30 something feet long and I've got to do it on my own of course because uh, the little chaps that ride in these aren't big enough to to help but this is a dream it's something that we're looking forward to and it starts on Monday. How about that? Anyway, to my fellow Hornby Dublo dreamers, keep dreaming, keep looking at these wonderful things and keep enjoying. And well, we'll have these things running and flipping out mailbags and picking up mailbags before you can say Jack Robinson or Nigel Gresley. Right, okay, that's enough of me waffling. Uh, what have I got to do now? I have got to, um, I've got to dig plants out of a garden. So I'm gonna go and do that. You enjoy the rest of your afternoons. And yeah, keep the dream alive. <laughs>